This video explains the operation and setup of the home-built Michelson interferometer that you can find the building instructions on my blog. Just to show the outline of what the Michelson interferometer consists of, we start with um, a laser here. and it, I've got a commercial Sigmatron laser, which is a bit more expensive and high-powered. plugs in the wall. I'm using this for testing because uh, it's easier to leave it on for long periods, but it can also work with a laser pointer, and I've made a little uh, stand for holding and adjusting the angle and height of the laser pointer. I'm using a block of wood to hold a lens. The lens will spread out the laser beam and make it easier to see the interference pattern, and a variety of different lenses can be used for spreading out the lens. It could be a converging or a diverging because both of them will diverge after the focus. Light goes into a half-silvered mirror, which is uh, a material that has not a, the standard amount of silvering on it. You can see by looking through it, you can see both reflection and transmission through the mirror. So this splits the beam into two paths, which are perpendicular to each other. And then the light reflects off two other mirrors at 90 degrees to each other. These are full silvered, but they're front surface mirrors, meaning that the silvery material is on the front of the glass, not on the back of the glass, so the light doesn't pass through the glass at all. On the back of the fully silvered mirrors, there are three adjustment bolts. And these are supporting the mirror like a tripod, and the elastic bands hold it against the vaults. So this allows us to adjust the angle of the mirror very carefully. The initial setup of the system is to make sure that the laser is pointing at the half-silvered mirror and towards one of the two uh, fully silvered mirrors along a straight line and you're trying to get the reflections to come back to where they started. So you need to put the laser on some kind of platform or stand and aim it towards the half-silvered mirror and try and make sure that the reflections coming back are coming back into the same place. You can't see this so well in the video, but with the lights off, you can usually see where the beams of light are hitting the surface of the half-silvered mirror. When you get it working correctly, you can look over at the screen here and see that there are several points of light on the screen. And the two brightest of these are the two that you want to be synchronizing. The third one is a reflection off the glass surface, not the silver material, and it's slightly displaced from the other. So now we need to adjust the screws on the back of the mirror here to try and line up those two bright spots. Because the screws on the back of the mirror are in a triangle arrangement instead of in a square, when you adjust one of the lower screws you'll see that the spot of light moves at an angle. If you move the third one, then you can actually move it horizontally and line up the spots of light on the screen. Once the mirrors have been aligned so that they're reflecting the light along the right path, you now want to spread out the beam of light using the lens. So you have to carefully put the lens into the path of the laser and make sure that the laser is shining through the very center of the lens. This will probably require some adjustment of the height and angle of the laser and of the orientation, the tilt and the movement horizontally of the lens itself. Eventually what you want to do is try and get a bigger spot of light on the screen in approximately the same place as you had the small dots. Because the laser beam is spread out, you will have to do this in the dark, so be careful you know where everything is and you can reach it without bumping into it too badly. 
the lens will also make a kind of pattern on the screen, which is not the interference pattern. It's just due to the uh, deformities in the lens itself. What you're looking at for the interference pattern is a very, very fine and rapidly changing set of bright and dark bands. You can't see them at the moment, but looking at the screen I can just barely make them out. So I'm going to have to do a little bit more adjustments of the mirrors in order to bring them to a better position and better spacing. So as I adjust them, I can watch the image on the screen. I have to make an adjustment, look again to see if it's got any broader bends, move it again, and keep on doing this until I can get something more like a bullseye pattern. Ultimately, you're looking for that kind of bullseye pattern, which, as I say, is bouncing around a lot. But once you are very, very still and the material is very stiff, you will get it settling to a constant interference pattern. If you then touch the material of the wood, you'll see it immediately jumps around so much because you're changing one of the paths compared to the other just by a very slight amount, by a fraction of the wavelength of the red light. So you can see how sensitive this uh, interferometer is to small changes in the paths of the light. If you block one of the paths completely, you get nothing. That's the dimmer of the two. And there's the brighter. You see, you just get the lens pattern, you don't get the interference pattern. So I'm sure that that is an interference pattern. It needs to have both of the paths present in order to be able to see the pattern of interference.